What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Zenas and my name is Shanks and today we are going to cast a 1v1 replay on a beautiful map Higurashi Forest in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the page 2.2 between Evil and Evil. We have Mordor versus Isengard. So it's a very good map for the Evil factions because we have 3 settlements outside which should be kind of better for Mordor at the beginning of the game but also Isengard can be very strong later on. In this map, the outpost control is essential. So basically, if Isengard gets to control outposts with crossbowmen inside the outpost, it's going to be quite difficult for Mordor to take it down. But in, on the other hand, it's going to be the same return, you know, uh, swapped. So basically, if Mordor controls the outpost, builds orc pits, pressures you non-stop. I'm not a big fan of this start, by the way, because the Lambermere is close to the settlement and the worker is going to repair this. Even, let's assume you take it down, I don't think it's going to be too valuable. I don't think so. Because you will at least get one more orc out on the field. And, uh, you know, you will lose everything that you have. Because of the Uruk pit and furnace opening. I'm not a big fan of this one either. I think a double furnace opening is a bit better. But he built up the slaughterhouse over here, which is tankier. So basically, in the version, uh, page 2.2, the version 3.4. Now the slaughterhouse is starting with level 2. They have also 3.5k health while a lumber mill has only 1500 health but remember a lumber mill you can repair and also it gives you more money compared to the slaughterhouse and also the bonus of the lumber mill is better because it gives you the wood bonus making your structures cost less you know but this one is going to be destroyed for sure you might even get level 2 out of that but he's repairing like crazy you see when he has like five to six people repairing this it's quite durable it will take you a bit more time to destroy it it's gonna go down, but at least you bought some additional time. The slaughterhouse here was saved, it's pretty big. I like that one. Double orc pit opening. I mean, uh, after the first orc pit, double orc pit now, which is kind of crucial against faction of Isengard, because with double orc pit and three orcs, you can outspam your opponent. He has to pay for the Uruks, and you don't have to pay anything but time for your orc warriors. Alright, so it's a 2 1 situation. You always want to switch to the block formation. That's like the most important thing in those skirmishes. Uh, just to get a bit more durability. You have you lose nothing but movement speed, which is like not important at all if you stand still in fight. So it's like win-win situation. Mordor is a very good eco. And you can see you now that's the difference. Isengard have to invest 200 each time, and orcs cost nothing. So you can literally save and invest every single resource you make into building up your castle like he did but people underestimate are the orc arches though because like 250 only they are like the cheapest arches in the game especially for a faction like Ar mordor which has like a lot of money when you make like two of them and you keep shooting non-stop it's quite helpful to creep it's quite helpful to defend you know it's pretty good especially because orcs they get to level up way faster and if they are like level two level three you can even combine them with your orc arches so you have like a level three combo battalion which is quite strong you know but Mordor is creeping this, it's gonna be decent. He's also pressuring all the time, but Isengard is able to defend. The only mistake Mordor is making is he's not pressuring as much as he could. And Isengard gets to keep those settlements out. The Slaughterhouse here doing a phenomenal job for Isengard player. And we have a lot of furnace up on the field, okay? So Berserker is gonna be recruited next, which also costs 200 resources, so it's not cheap. Uh, sim similar to the orcs but the good thing about berserker is they get to recruit they get recruited very fast so it's a level two production building and you need to only invest eight seconds for the berserker and in the patch 2.2 they can also heal up out of the combat so if they are not fighting they are damaged they can heal up that was not the case in the patch 1.03 the last official patch version of ear games right before they abandoned the games sad 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 in 2000 10 it was you know 13 years ago by the way we are coming closer to the 20 years anniversary of bfme and we have like a big plan a big event in the planning so stay tuned i can't give you too many informations about that one just yet but uh, it's gonna be something very special something we have not done like until now you know but not not everything is confirmed so i can't really share experience uh, share you know information with you yet there's a tower here in Haradrim Palace. He will demolish Haradrim Palace um, and put the Haradrims inside the outpost. But people don't do, don't do, and what they should be doing when you play a long game as Mordor against Isengard, you need to get some siege works. That's like essential, okay? 
and you need you can at some point you can even build up two or three siege wardings simultaneously and spam because Isengard will most likely spam you know combos against you so he's trying to creep this with the berserker war chant easy peasy level four berserkers actually hitting like a track and creep easily done Isengard is this one that is control crossbowmen not inside he should be putting one of them inside the outpost the tower plus the crossbowmen should be easily enough to deal against massive amount of oryx and then you can later on give them even fire arrows which will make them also quite threatening against heroes like nazgul and even the witch king all right the berserker they have been unleashed but trolls will smash them Good echo uh, for Isengard, still kind of surprising, but I think this is not like the worst map for Isengard, just because the settlements are very close to the castle in this map, Higurashi Forest, especially these two settlements, so build like a tower here, it's going to be a great protection for this settlement, build a tower here, it's going to protect this pathway, which makes it only possible to attack this from this location, so you can't attack this from this location without this and this tower shooting at you, and Oryx, even though they can be annoying, they are very squishy units, so they will die to a few shots of your towers. Crossbowmen will be placed now inside the outpost eventually. Lourdes is going to be recruited. We have still a creep over here remaining which Lourdes can take. And that's going to bring him to level 3. Remember level 5 is the power spike we are looking for. Which is going to be very helpful when it comes to deal with the trolls later on of the Mordor faction. I mean the way this matchup is designed. Remember Mordor's strength is the spam. While Isengard is focusing more on upgraded units like quality. And Mordor also relying on leadership while Isengard can shut it down you know and your monsters you know even though they are very powerful with the drama troll witch king darkness but they are not very powerful when they lose all the leadership bonuses so basically it's all about playing around the cooldowns okay and at some point even though it sounds lame but you will need catapults as mordor you will need a lot of them and also i would like to see an orc pit over here maybe even two orc pits to keep pressuring remember mordor as a faction is able to gain power points from losing orcs so it's like a win-win situation you lose nothing you pressure up and he will have to perma defend himself for now he has like three lumber mills four lumber mills he has the full wood bonus which is kind of unexpected in this matchup industry being quite helpful too and lords was able to creep this using cripple on the work getting level three and only two levels actually less than that away from getting to unlock the white hand the leadership bonuses for the nearby troops it's gonna make combos I, I, I think it's a little bit too late for this one maybe i'm not sure we shall see them uh, more, more than this 2000 resources like time is very important guys okay so you you wanna like the way you need to play this game is you lock in random for example and you see the you know the map right and you see your faction the second you see enemy faction or you see it's a evil or good after wall checking you need to have a plan in your mind you need, to, you need to be like, okay, I'm going to do this, 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 this. And of course, you don't want to be stubborn with your plan because your opponent might actually force you to switch your plan, but then you need to immediately have like a new plan and you need to follow the plan. And then you need to invest every single second, which time is the most important resource in this game, okay? So if you cash flow it, it's a big no-no. And Mortal, for example, is 3,000 before he decided to make combos. You would have made the combos like maybe two minutes ago one minute ago and this could be the game changing thing you know what i mean because now isengard has combos if you play this matchup properly you should go attack him before he has this much army like he has lords and three combos plus crossbowmen that's like five thousand resources he has you know but then he didn't spam too many orcs he let him this uh, capture this one so like few mistakes can lead this game to this spot and now you need siege warriors because isengard combos are just stronger than your combos that's just the way it is you know you have leadership uh, they have armor from the heavy armor you don't and you have no witch king leadership no darkness that means you can't fight against them you can't beat them especially when lords gets level five i think he's very close to that as well so isengard was able to capture this triple out uh, furnace around this location isengard getting quite rich too very soon he will be able to save up for the white wizard saruman which Kind of like a big counter to your trolls um if you are not lazy there is a way you can play around saruman when you play mortar with the trolls you can make like two three trolls with the trees because they are needed to crash because three give you more splash damage which is very good against combos but then you can make few of them with the rocks 
So basically you give them rocks, you use hold ground stand so they don't automatically shoot the rocks. And then you just wait. And you engage with your trolls, with your 2-3 trolls on the enemy combos. Trust me on that one. Saruman will try to steal them. And even if he steals them, he will have to stand still for like 20 seconds. Or not 20 seconds, but like 2-3 seconds. And this is your time to shine. Then you use your trolls with the rocks and you smash his head with the rocks. And the wizard must pay, you know what I mean? Big push, industry buffed, slaughterhouse uh, will be destroyed. That's quite painful for Mordor. Isengard is 4.4k, Mordor is 5.5k. Still a bit away from getting to the Witch King. The combos have to rotate. He's not going for the base street. Um, he's actually going for defense okay now that's a very questionable move maybe i would go for the base street here i think now what i would like to do i would send my trolls to defend this and my drummer troll one of them in my combos i would go attack his castle what can he do he has no army there trolls are smashing what is lords doing lords is frontlining this with the carnage your carnage is strong but it's not unbeatable rain is gonna be a big counter to the mordor playstyle the, the combos they are trying to disengage but you can't outrun trolls trolls are just faster than any infantry in the game if you run you will get smashed so you better i mean if you know you will lose all of them it's just better to stand and deal a lot of damage he's gonna use palantir i'm not sure if they can still get away with the palantir i don't think so now you can you see trolls are just fast the combos are very slow if they would be crossbowmen or normal uruks maybe but he actually were able was able to save them because Outpost has some crossbow man. Mordor is the Outpost over here. Darkness available. And Rain is gonna be available too. So very soon we will have a uh, wizard. Very soon, I mean, he has already the white wizard somewhere. Uh, there he is. The uh, Saruman is here. He has also the blast. Pew! Blast them into the next mansion. In the meantime, the Outpost here will be taken down. Bad focus from Mordor. Just destroy this one first. But it's okay. He has like very strong army over here. He went for the Mumu Kill Pen instead of going for the for the Witch King. Um, which is okay, I believe, because, you know, Witch King, as strong as he is, there is going to be a rain button which will shut his leadership down. But it won't shut his uh, debuff down, okay? Witch King is also a debuff, so negative leadership can't be shut down by the rain. And Witch King is the only hero that can provide negative leadership for the enemy troops, okay? So making their armor a bit less, which gives you the chance to kill them a bit faster if you are trolls. However, uh, we have been nerfing Rain quite a bit. So now it has two minutes. Hold on a second. I will show you guys. He didn't even pick it yet. But it has like a long duration, long cooldown. And the duration has been nerfed. So now uh, you will have to be quite smart about when and where to use your Rain. Because after the duration is gone, your next ability, your next Rain is going to take a longer time to be available again. Okay. So Isengard, they are swapping outposts all the time. So Isengard rotating to the top, Mordor taking down the bottom. But Mordor stopped caring about map control, and that's a major mistake in my book. Too many combos, one of them is heavily damaged, but a lot of firepower. But the Rain is going to shut them down anyway. They have only leadership from Drummer Troll. Only, which is not more than a Warchant gives you. So long story short, even though it sounds crazy, but Isengard has more leadership now. And Rain is available. You see, cooldown 6 minutes, in duration 2 minutes and 40 seconds. So that means 3 minutes and 20 seconds you can't use Rain. And that's the time Mordor has to play the game. He's holding his Rain. Trolls. The second if the Trolls will charge, nah, never mind. He's gonna use the Rain now. Now Mordor has to look for a, for a chance to disengage. But he, on the enemy land, he's gonna pick land too. Is he gonna really cover this land though? That's a big question. You gotta keep an eye on the White Wizard Sariman, okay? He has the game-changing potential. He's gonna use the land. There comes the steel, and he stole the trolls. I mean, that's expected. You see that? That the, you 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 know, like, I think that was like the great opportunity for Mordor to just disengage, knowing you can't win the fight. You gotta you gotta wait. You wait two minutes, two minutes, ten seconds, then you engage. Then you are strong because when you engage, then you have all your army, on, or most of them are remaining because the combos have no catch potential they can't catch you the trolls are by the way still there and then next fight you can even have witch king joining them you understand look this they almost destroyed this one as well fireball will save today um 
and this lumber mill is still under control from Isengard. You know, that's the main reason why Isengard is able to do this many things simultaneously. In, uh, the map is also favoring this kind, kind of playstyle, but normally and usually when you play this right, Isengard can't do all of that this fast. You know, you can do this when the game goes like 5 to 10 minutes longer, but I think he got way too fast to the point of having a big army, lords, Saruman, and all, you know? Okay. Mumma kills. Trolls. Mumma kills, they are expensive though. They cost 1800 each. Like double the price of the trolls, almost. We shall see. Aradrims. Men of the East. Creatures of the East. I like the I like the way he's splitting up the army a bit. You know, he has like a couple of combos um, for the for the tank statues of the army, and then he has crossbowmen, which are like the damage dealers. Like trust me, crossbowmen dealing more damage because they have the chance to use the formation, and with the formation they are dealing increased damage, and also they are way more mobile compared to the combos. But combos you still need them. Oh boy. Look, the crossbowmen are crazy strong. But now they will die. Did he war chant them? I think he war chanted them. Yeah, yeah. That's why they were actually kind of crazy strong. Now he has no more war chant for this army. And Lourdes is only level 4. It means they have only leadership from Saruman. Which only gives you armor leadership. And not damage leadership. Okay. And no FNAS goods all game long. Uh, but he has Mumma kills. Or one Mumma kill he has. He's gonna get this outpost, but I think you can't really underestimate this army of Isengard. Even though Rain is, I mean, Warchen is not available, and Lourdes is not level 5 yet. Lourdes level 5 is gonna be a game changing situation here, because you can destroy every structure here, like, twice as fast, you know? Building stuff to kind of make them block, so they will ignore everything and go for the, for the Baradur. The level 3 slaughterhouses losing them is going to be quite painful. The combos are rotating without drama leadership, without anything. Not even I is going to be used. I is going to be used now. You move I to your combos at least. Lords just got level 5. Or was it Saruman? I think it was Saruman. But also Lords is getting close there. Every single Strax is shooting those combos down. But remember, they have the leadership from Saruman and his armor leadership. Plus heavy armor, the Uruks. This is not Rabble of Mindless Orcs. These are Urukai. Their shield is broad and their armor is thick. Okay. And for now, they are zooming with the Palantir. I like and love the new animation of the <laughs> Palantir. It looks actually quite juicy. Uh, 11 power points for Mordor, 8 power points for Isengard. So, on the people, Isengard is a bit behind in the power points department. But this is not like a huge gap. You know, like 2 3 power points in an evil mirror match can easily turn around in one single battle. Like, there are too many valuable creatures like Mumma kills. If you kill them, you get a lot of power points for that. So he has three of them. So each of them is going to give you like a whole power point, you know. Like, you need to understand, the more expensive the unit you are losing to your opponent is, the more power points he will get out of that. It's a very snowball game in the power points department. That's just like the way the game is designed. In the ultimate power points, in this case we are talking about the Balrog summon, can definitely be like game winning move. Imagine you summon Balrog right here on the spot. You one shot everything, you know. And you can fly, but I like the way that he has two armies. And the multitask, like, I think two armies on a map like this is kind of broken. It's very strong because you have, like, two pathways only, you know? So you can sandwich them and use your mobility advantage. There comes the darkness, but remember, the second darkness is available. As the cooldown is the same, you need to know that rain is also available. Oh, you are lucky that he didn't charge. But he fall on your face. Okay, now big army. The drama trolls are rotating in. Not using. He's gonna use, but only get one of the trolls. Now the Mumma kid is charging. He's angry. He's angry. He's angry. He's angry. He's angry. He's angry. Imagine. Dude, there is a Saruman step on him, son. Oh, oh, oh. Lourdes got stepped, though. Lourdes got stepped. I like the Mumma kid so much. I like them so much. They are worth every single penny. Every single penny they are worth. Oh, but oh, never mind. He almost crashed his own combos. We have 13 power points and 18 for Mateusz. He's two power points away from getting to the Balrog. But look at the minimap, please, at the same time, okay? The minimap is looking all white to me. Isengard showing Sauron. 
that Saruman is the real villain of Middle Earth, okay? Beautiful performance. I like the way he was sandwiching a couple of mistakes, but they are always a part of the game. That, that makes the game kind of more like they are humans after all, you know? I like this game. I mean, I, I will also try to play myself a bit more in the in the near uh, in the in the following days because I'm extremely rusty. I didn't play. Maybe I played like five games in the last three months, and I'm super rusty. So I gotta get back in form. I gotta get back in form, boys. Oh, sorry, <laughs> didn't want to do that. Okay, but he's almost Balrog. Okay, and Isengard still needs five power points for it. We shall see. Two Mumma kills. If the Mumma kill pan is level 3, it's gonna cause the Mumma kills come out with level 2. Okay? So each Mumma kill coming out now is gonna be automatic level 2. This damage is irrelevant, in my opinion, for the Mumma kills. Because they want shot everything they touch anyway, right? But what is important is the recovery. So when you are out of combat, you can heal up. Nice dodge. Nice dodge. Oh, oh. You see? This is why Mumma kills are crazy. Even if you kill them, you need to respect them, you understand? <laughs> uh, this girl is on fire! <laughs> there is a berserker, by the way, hiding, enjoying the summertime at the beach, you know? Let's see if Badrock... Oh, he's trying to get there. Oh, but too much fire, dude. Like, literally, everything what Isengard has is shooting. Finally, a siege works, but it's a bit too late for this, in my opinion. Oh, still a beautiful trample. Fall this way. Nice falling. Falling doesn't deal too much damage, but still chunking them a bit. Remember, evil factions have no recovery. Besides Saruman getting level 8 with the Will of Saruman, but he's only level 6. Getting level 8 with Saruman is not very easy. No, it's easier than getting Gan after level 10, of course. But it's gonna still be quite time consuming. Unless you have like a crazy... Oh! Hello, my to my little friend. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay. He was paying attention to his Saruman, but Saruman, 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 run this way, please. He knocked him down on the ground. No, he showed mercy. Dude, you gotta kill the wizard, man. You gotta kill the wizard. In the meantime, the moment Kill is gonna, gonna get destroyed, it's gonna fireball this catapult, by the way, I think. He's gonna be able to destroy this moment Kill. That's big. He has no whip for the, for the, for the white wizard. So, oh, can't touch this. He's joking with him. He's he's playing with him, you know. Fly again, fly again. Look, when you fly, you don't wanna, you don't wanna. Um, uh, I also made the mistake a few times. You wanna just fly where he is. She come here, boy. Oh, actually, he has no more time. No, Saruman, the survivor. Who now he's a strain to face against the forces of Isengard and me. <laughs> okay, I mean, Isengard still needs a half power point for this power rock, but I think Matthew is just gonna call it GG. I'll play it. I hope you guys enjoyed this game. Little Isengard against Mordor action. I hope to see you all in my next video. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep eating like a truck, and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.